Hey everybody, welcome back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and in this video, we're gonna do another hardware to plug-in software, kind of a comparison, kind of an experiment. And we're gonna to listen to um, today the Heritage Audio Successor, which is a stereo bus compressor, kind of an SSL style bus compressor by Heritage Audio, great unit. You'll see it come up on the screen here in a second. We're gonna compare that on a drum bus to a couple of different plugins that I've used over the years as my drum bus compressors in, in a lot of my mixes. Number one being the FG Gray by Slate Digital, and we're gonna compare it also to the FG Red by Slate Digital, and then we're also gonna compare it to the 33609 Neve by Universal Audio. So one of the things, um, and part of me moving to a more hybrid setup over the last six months, one of the things that I wanted to um, to make sure that I was doing and to pass along to all of you, to some of my followers who are either doing hybrid mixing now or have been considering it in the past and is now on the same journey that I am, is my goal is to make sure that I'm picking hardware pieces that is giving me something really that I can't achieve or haven't been able to achieve with plugins, right? Not so much as to have the hardware, just to have it so I have the cool knobs and it looks cool in the rack. And that is true, it does look very cool. As you can see, the Heritage Audio is a great uh, piece, um, but it really is all about sound. So can I achieve the same sound with the plugins that I use compared to the hardware? If the answer to that question is, well, no, you can't, the hardware sounds so much better in my opinion, and again, sound is subjective, then it's a good piece to keep. If it's, uh, you know, pretty, really, 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 really close with the plugins, um, or not really any, um, you know, really sizable difference, then you say to yourself, well, maybe, you know, the hardware, that piece of hardware isn't really gonna work for my workflow. And so that's what this kind of is. So we're gonna compare it on a, we're gonna listen to it on a drum bus today. But in future videos, I'm also gonna do the same thing on maybe bass and some guitars and stuff, and just try to really put the Heritage Audio um, through its paces and see how much different quote unquote better if we feel that it's better or I feel that it's better or how much different it is compared to the plugin. So what we have here is I have a, a small acoustic drum kit here. Down here in brown, I have a kick, a snare, a tom track, which is kind of a stereo tom track and a set of overheads. The only processing that I've done to this is on each one of these tracks, I've went in quickly with a pro EQ here and just shaped it and EQ'd it a little bit just to make it sound a little bit nicer, um, you know, as you would during the mixing process. But each of these individual tracks is not um, compressed in any way, just a little EQ on the kick and the snare and a little bit on the toms and on the overheads, a little bit of EQ to kind of clean it up, sweeten it up a little bit. So in brown, we have these four tracks and those are being routed to this bus uh, here called the um, drum bus here. And this is the software. So I'm gonna say the software drum bus is here with the three plugins. And then I duplicated those drum tracks and put them here in purple. Again, with the same EQ settings, same, um, you know, as far as the faders, same volume, same everything. And that is being routed to this bus here where I'm using PreSonus Studio One Pipeline. And on Pipeline XT, I am using the Heritage Audio HX, uh, H, um, HA successor, okay? So that's what we have kind of going on here. Now you can see on the video that's gonna pop up hopefully on the screen here in a second, you can see kind of my settings. Now these are completely different compressors, the hardware to the software. The goal isn't do they sound exactly the same. It's not like the video I did a few weeks ago where we were, where we were comparing a real Neve 1073 preamp to a Neve 1073 plugin. That's different. These are gonna sound different from each other, for sure. They're different pieces of hardware, different plugins, right? So as you can see on the HS successor, where, and I'll show you in a second, where my you know, attack and release is, all the side chain filters are turned off, so I'm not using any of the high pass filters and all of that. Hopefully you'll be able to see this in the video. It might be a little bit dark, and you'll, you'll see here as we do the demonstration, as I turn it on and off, you'll see the compression. And we're achieving about three to four dB of compression at a four to one ratio on all these compressors. So the first thing I wanna do is I want you to listen to the HA, the Heritage Audio Successor. So here's the Heritage Audio Successor, and you'll see on the little video here what we're kind of doing as far as compression question goes. So you can see right here, three to four dB, and if I turn it off, that's before, after. 
So on the makeup game, which you probably can't see, it's off frame because I just can't get the phone in where this thing is located close enough. I'm only adding a couple of dB of makeup gain just to level match the on and the off, okay? That's all I'm doing here. Again, the high pass filter is completely off and we will do the same thing on the other plugins as well to make sure we're trying to compare something that's close to, you know, apples to apples, even though it's not the same. Um, the release, the attack, it's a four to one ratio. The attack time is, is fairly slow. It's not at its slowest setting. It's about one notch slower and the release time it's completely the fastest setting and again the settings and the milliseconds on the heritage audio is going to be different from the plugins so i realized that before you start making a bunch of comments below i get all of that that's we're not trying to like i said let's just take it for what it's worth so there's the heritage audio successor okay and now over here we have and we'll start with the fg gray by slate digital so again we're doing a four to one ratio we're going to compress about the same amount we're doing the fastest release the you know not the fastest attack one notch a little slower side chain filter is off and i level match the plug-in as far as makeup gain so here is the fg gray So probably need a little bit more compression. To, there we go. That gets pretty darn close to what we're doing on the hardware. That's before. After. Okay, so there we go. So that's the first one. So let's compare the sound of that. And then what I'll do is I will un, I will mute that and then turn on the hardware so you could see, but you could listen here back and forth, the difference between the hardware, the successor, and this F, uh, FG Gray. So let's start with the FG Gray because we already got it up here, so here we go. So you'll just keep your eye on the meter here and you'll keep your eye on the meter on the little window that's gonna pop up and you'll see when I'm switching, but you'll know that uh, the one that says drum bus is for the plugins, the one that says HI successor is for the hardware. Okay, so let's start with the FG Gray. Okay, so what I hear, I don't know what you'll hear over YouTube, I tried to again level match as well so the volume between the hardware and the software is relatively as close as I can get it, okay, without being too crazy about this. What I hear here is that the um, the hardware, the HS, the Heritage Audio Successor, um, seems to have a little bit more depth to it. I noticed the kick drum isn't as tight as, as, in, as, as punchy as with the FG Grey, the kick gets a lot tighter and a lot more thick sounding. Whereas on the, um, the successor, the hardware, it seems to be a little bit more, not as thick sounding, but the whole drum sound seems to be deeper. There's a sense of depth to it where the um, FG Grey seems to be a little bit more narrow. So I, I feel like the hardware is a little bit wider and a little bit deeper. Let's listen to that again. So we're gonna start with the hardware. And you listen to the kick in particular. Right, so it almost seems like the kick is a little bit tighter, a little bit, a little bit punchier, a little bit more solidified. But it almost seems like when I go from the hardware to the software, like the hardware, the width starts here. It, you know, trying to use this as a visual, and then when I go to the plugin, it seems like it gets more narrow sounding. Now that's not a bad thing; it's just different. But let's listen to that again. Here's the FG Gray.
it almost seems like too with the hardware i hear more of the compression of the overheads where i hear more of the room where on the fg gray i don't hear as much of the room okay so again it's try you know pretty pretty fair comparison i feel again you could tweak these things a little bit each and i get all of that believe me i'm just trying to get us in the ballpark now by the way if you've been following me or been, you, know, you purchase any of my training courses or anything like that over the years, you know that I use this plugin all the time on drum bus, all the time. So I love this compressor, okay? This is not a knock against it. I use this an awful lot. I think it sounds wonderful, but it sounds to my ear way different than the Heritage Audio. So let's now go to another one. Let's bypass this and let's go to the FG Red. Now this is another one that I use on the drum bus from time to time. And again, I'm using about four to one ratio. I'm using a, you know, the same kind of attack and release settings, very, you know, slow attack, very fast release. On this one, you have the drive, which I'm pushing up about halfway just because why not? Uh, and here we go. So here's what the um, the FG Red sounds like. Again, this is a, the Focusrite emulation by Slate Digital. Again, really great compressor. And again, about the same amount of compression, roughly. That's before, after. Okay, now let's compare it to the hardware. Okay, so again, and, and by the way, the mix knob on the plugins is at 100% fully compressed. It's not, we're not doing a parallel compression thing. Same thing on the um, on the successor, just because I didn't mention that. Um, once again, it seems like to me in this example that the uh, hardware, the successor, it seems like there's more depth. I hear more of the room. It seems a little bit bigger, a little bit more lively. Um, the FG Red seems a little bit more narrow. Now, I will say the difference between the FG Red and the FG Gray is quite different as well. Obviously, it would be. They're two different compressors, and I get all of that. Um, it seems like the FG Gray has a little bit more punch. The FG Red seems the before and after, when you just turn it on and off, there's less of an audible effect. It seems a little bit more subtle to me at these settings, the way we're compressing it. Okay, so let's, let's continue to listen to that. So we'll start with the FG um, Red here, and then we'll go back to the hardware. Past this just so you once again as a reference point no compression on the hardware with compression Okay, so there's a comparison to the FG Red. What do you think about that? I'd be interested to know if you guys leave some comments. So now let's bypass this and let's go to another compressor that I've used in the past quite a bit on drum bus, which is the Neve 33609 by Universal Audio. Again, this is an older plugin. The limiter section is off. Again, trying to use about the same amount of compression, same ratio settings, same attack and release settings for the most part. But again, they're all gonna react a little differently. Here is the 33609 on its own.
before. Okay, so the 33609 on its own, when you just turn it on and off and bypass it, it seems the least um, uh, obvious to me, the most subtle. Okay, you hear a little bit of tightening up on the kick and the snare, a little bit more in the rooms, but it's very subtle. It doesn't have, um, you know, it's not as uh, noticeable, if you will, to my ear as the FG Red or even the FG Gray. Okay, just a point of, uh, of, of reference there. So, so that's the 33609. So now let's compare that to the Heritage Audio. So we'll start with the 33609 and then I will come back to the Heritage Audio. Okay, so there you go. So there's a comparison there. Again, once again, to me, the Heritage Audio seems wider and deeper to me. That's what I hear here. Doesn't mean it's better, it's just different. So those are three plug-in bus compressors that I use and have used for many years, an awful lot. Love all of them. The FG Grey is probably the one that I like the most as far as um, for a drum bus, that's typically would be my go-to. And we can we could finish up this video listening to that one more time. This is the one that seems to be more, um, more, um, you know, thicker sounding. I love the fact that this particular compressor gives you a really nice, tight, thick kick drum, um, which is what I love about it. it. Really tightens up that kick really nicely. But what I, what I love about in this example, the hardware sounds, again, wider and it has a sense of depth to it that the plugin just doesn't have. So this is another kind of kind of a great segue where, if again, if you've been following me for any length of time, and especially if you're a part of MixingMadeEasy.net or if you've bought my training courses, we talk a lot about compressors and we talk about tone and we talk about how compressors sound so different. And for beginners that might be watching this video, we've talked a lot about, well, why do you have all these compressors? Why do you have, you know, 15 or 20 or 30 different different plug-in compressors because they all sound different from each other and as you just heard in this example depending on what you like because it's very subjective every one of these three plugins sound different from each other and they sound different from the hardware so depending on the mix depending on the sound you're going for depending on what you like because what you like is the right answer it's not what i like it's what you like um, this is where compressor choice makes a difference. This is some of the reason why when you get into third party plugins and use these kinds of plugins that they react differently and they all sound different compared to something just like a stock compressor. And this is the fun uh, of having this. And again, I, I think of compressors a lot like a painter having different colors on their painting palette. They may be all red but they're all different shades of red. And depending on the, the, the source material and what you're looking for for a particular mix will depend on which shade of red you may pick. So I thought you guys would find this fun. Again, I know it's not some scientific example and not everything is exact. They are all gonna sound different from each other because they all are different compressors, but that's not the point. The point for me and is part, again, part of my moving into a hybrid journey is looking for hardware pieces that do something different than the plugins do or do something that my current set of plugins do not do. 
And so I thought I'd like to bring this to you. And in future videos, we'll take this uh, Heritage Audio Successor, we'll put it on bass, we'll put it on acoustic and electric guitars, and we'll put it across a whole bunch of instruments and do some more of these comparisons. So I want to know what you think. Leave comments below and let me know which one did you like better? How do you, what, uh, you know, what compressors do you use? Now, please don't ask me in the comments, can you compare this one to the audio, Heritage Audio and this one to the Heritage Audio? I'm not going to be able to take everybody's requests and, and take every compressor under the sun and compare it to the hardware. I gave you three real popular examples here. Um, so please don't ask me to do certain compressors because I just don't have the time to make those kinds of videos. But anyway, I'd like to know what you think below. Leave me some comments and let me know. And if you want to learn more about compression, especially if you're new to compression, you may want to check out my course over at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I have a brand new course, Compression Made Easy 2020, where you really br I really break down um, compression for you in a really easy and non-technical way. And we do a lot of this listening A-B comparisons and you get all the audio files and yada, yada, yada. So check out Compression Made Easy. I'll leave the link in the description box below. And if you want to get yourself a discount, I'll give you a 25% or 20% discount. Uh, put the coupon coupon code ME25 uh, off. That'll give you 25% off. 25% off. ME25 off at checkout. That'll knock 25% off. Compression made easy. If you want to check out that today. And also, if you're brand new here again, welcome to the family. Go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And I want to give you my brand new mixing training course right on the homepage. Hit the button, you'll get a free mixing training course with the audio files so you can mix the song along with me and you can start getting introduced to the whole uh, mixing series that I have at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And until next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Let me know below what you thought about this video and I will see you all very, very soon. Take care, everybody.